point of view, the ADU opportunity is what I see as the next great wave in Seattle real estate. Jimmy has been doing it for a while, and he's going to tell us more about what he does and how he does it. So, Jimmy, the floor is yours. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tom, for inviting me to speak. Um, okay? yeah. I think I'm just going to be speaking because I didn't, well, I, was, I didn't prepare a presentation. But uh, um, so I guess I, I just do a quick backstory about me and you know how I started in uh, in real estate investing. So I bought my first two duplexes uh, when I was 24 in Tacoma, um, and uh, I got started because I read the 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 book Rich Dad Poor Dad. And that, of course, got me thinking about passive income. And then, you know, I started looking for opportunities, which somehow I ended, I was looking for laundry mats, but somehow I ended up with like a mailbox store, like a UPS store. So we owned that. We used to own that for like, I think, 10 plus years in Kent. Um, but at the same time, after that, we started looking for, you know, flips. And then, of course, reaps um, been a critical part of, you know, my networking back in probably 17 years ago, <laughs> uh, when it was at UW Kane Hall. Yes. Oh, yeah, good times. <laughs> so, you know, networking uh, at those events. And then um, started doing flips, started doing wholesaling. Um, there was a point in time where I was sending about 20,000 postcards a month to, get to, you know, do my own marketing. Uh, then, of course, the recession hit. And at the same time, while I was investing in real estate, I was uh, also at my corporate job, um, so I was in uh, IT, so I did that uh, all the way up to about 2014. My last job was at Expedia, um, so then, so once uh, the recession hit, I focused on my corporate job until 2012. That's when I got back into real estate again, um, started wholesaling, started flipping, and then you know, the flips became bigger flips. I'm talking about taking it down all the way to foundation and then building up uh, the house. Um, so since then, we've been focused on, you know, probably a million plus to close to $2 million single family homes that we built. And then, of course, when the bill uh, passed in Seattle around 2019 for the ADUs and two ADUs, um, that's when I started pivoting the business to focus more on that. So right now, our business is probably like 90% focusing on ADU, DADUs, townhouses, um, instead of like one single family, because it's harder to, you know, make, to pencil out with if you did a one luxury single family in Seattle, or even, you know, even Kirkland and all that. So, so we're mostly focusing on that uh, business model. Um, so, you know, uh, I guess the next thing we can talk about is maybe the two bills that passed uh, recently uh, in, in Washington State. Uh, the first one would be the HB 1337 that uh, is uh, geared towards the multiple ADUs in the whole state. So, you know, this is uh, a great time to be in real estate right now is this opportunity is almost the same as when Seattle came, you know, up. Uh, had LR zoning, and they also up zone, uh, you know, the, their zoning. The opportunity for building, you know, taking a single house and building f multiple townhouses. I mean, this is almost this is just as big, you know, up, uh, of an opportunity for you to uh, maximize your lots. Um, and especially if you were working on some flips and the numbers didn't really work out well. You know, now your opportunity is to build one or two in the back, and you, you'll come out um, okay on that. Um, so, so that's the opportunity to to build multiple ADUs in you know the whole state. Um, but of course, they're not going to get into effect until each city do their comprehensive plan. So, every five years, each city is going to update their comprehensive plan with. What the you know what the requirements are for doing this ADU and DADUs, so you know my advice would be to look you know go online look at which city you're interested in investing in and see when's the next time they're 
um, updating their comprehensive plan. I know that Everett, last, late last year, they passed you know, the ADU laws uh, already. So if you guys invest up here, then you know, definitely start looking for land and land bank if you can. Um, What's land bank? I'm just buying it now and then wait until uh, the price appreciate. You know, it's harder, I mean, I would say, uh, I was talking to Miles about this, but it's, it's harder to try to make a pencil to work in a lower price point cities, but the opportunity for you to buy the land cheaper now and wait out, you know, five to ten years, it, it's better, right? Um, so, uh, so, what I was saying is like, so it's harder to pencil out because, you know, right now it's hard to comp up here what a thousand square foot dadu sells for. Maybe probably 400,000, maybe 450 at the max. So if you're building your, uh, your dadus for, you know, Seattle, it's, you know, you're getting prices from 300 to 400,000 to build a thousand square foot dadu. So if you did that up here, you know, that there is no profit, right? So you got to wait until at least the price appreciates uh, high enough that you, if your, your strategy is to sell, then you got to wait till the price, you know, the, the sale price appreciate enough so that you make a spread. But if your strategy is just to build one in the back and to rent it out, that's still a little bit difficult because when you refi, your maximum is like 70%, right? So if you spend that much money to build and you're, when you do a refi, you can't get all your money out at 70%, then is it worth it? But if you want to do it just to, you mean if you did one or two, then you'll probably be able to cash flow a little bit, but then, you, then you're also creating a lot of equity as well. So that's the opportunity to do it now when you're outside on the outskirts of the, the core areas of like Seattle, Kirkland, Bellevue. And then the other law that passed is the HB 1110, and that's, you know, the duplex, fourplex, and then even sixplex if you're uh, within a quarter mile of a transit. So that one is also, you know, going to be up to the comprehensive plan as well. So I don't really know too much details about it, but again, if, if you can hold on to your lots for another year or so, I think the opportunity for you to make even, you know, uh, more profit would be greater just because once you get to, uh, so once we see the requirements of what each jurisdiction is going to set, you know, for, for developing it, then um, you'll probably see a lot of opportunity to develop it. So, so that's one thing, um, you know, I want you guys to understand is that every builder has different costs, right? I mean, we use different subs. So for me, I'm around 250 to 325, depending on site development. So vertical cost is you know, pretty much the same. And when I say vertical is foundation up. One of the surprises you might run into is like utilities and, and the, difficult, uh, the difficulty of your site. It might be slope, it might, you know, it might have ECA, it might, you know, so. so What's ECA? Uh, environmental critical area. You know, so the city might make you do special extra stuff uh, to develop it uh, on it. So, and then you might have to do extensions, utility extensions, you know, and uh, so, you know, City Light, Seattle City Light might make you put a new transformer. So things like that, just because you can develop in Seattle on every single family lot does not mean that, you know, it's straightforward. So if you can do your due diligence or feasibility study before you, you know, release that earnest money, you know, so it's, that's a great time to, that we're in now that we don't have to rush into waiving feasibility and waiving inspection and all that. So during that time, you know, want to check with the city, check with, you know, architects and surveyors of like, you know, if, if, if they're going to require us to do any special uh, extensions or anything like that. So that's why you want to be prepared for that. But if you're talking about just straight up vertical, yeah, so it's about 250 to 325, uh, depending on, again, your finishes, what you put in. Um, you know, we usually put in mini splits in all our bedrooms, living room. You might not want to do that. You might just want to put the master in the living room. Might not want to tile everything like all the way up from, you know, floor to ceiling. So 
those kind of finishes uh, will depend on, on your square footage cost. So, mm. the, the, you know, the best scenario would be like, if, you know, the, the lot has an alley in the back. So the reason why it's because then you can get more uh, lot coverage. So this, well, this is talking about city of Seattle uh, right now. So if you are able to get a, have an alley in the back of the lot, then you're able to actually build the dadu all the way up against the property line. If not, then you're you know you're you have a rear yard setback. Um, so then you know then that means you're going to be your dadu, <coughs> and if you you know you build your ADU and SFR, then it'd be really tight. I mean, I've managed to to squeeze in. Three, uh, three units on a 4,000 square foot lot, but then that's because <laughs> we had an alley in the back, right? So, um, so the per yeah, the, so alley in the back, you know, l less trees as possible, because um, if there is a significant or uh, exceptional tree, then you're gonna have to build around the canopy of it, not just the, the trunk of the tree, but the canopy. So you gotta be careful about that. Um, you know, of course, we like to have a flat land, but if you know, it doesn't have to be a flat land. But yeah, so that's uh, and then one of the, the best sites is a corner lot. Then you can you know you can turn the, your existing home, the front the front yard to be on the other side, and then you can build the dadu facing this way, and then you have two driveways and stuff. So that that's also a good site to look for. Do you have to provide off street parking? No, not anymore. Okay. So, so I don't know if you guys are familiar with the ADUs and DADUs laws of Seattle and eventually the whole state is that now there's no parking required. Uh, non, uh, you don't need to be owner occupied, you know, and you can condo it and sell it separately. Um, so, yeah, I mean, uh, but, you, but you can't take away the existing parking. That was there, so if you're gonna, but so the dadus and ADUs don't require parking. But if you know you can't take away that parking and build a dadu there, you, okay. and taking away the the existing house parking. <laughs> One of the difficulty is that if you bought an existing house with a conventional loan, and then try to build an ADU and dadu in the back. Right now, the the hardest part to get over is getting the existing conventional lender to release partial land when you refi. So that's right now is, uh, you know, the, the hardest part to, uh, the, the obstacle right now. Um, so that's why it, it, you would have to finance the daddy bill with cash, you know, home, home equity, line of credit, uh, hard money. Um, so, so that's the, the thing that we're you know, working through. But most of my projects, it's usually I scrape the existing house and build up three new ones, and that, and then you basically can walk under it, you know, to the front or back of the lot. Um, there's another project that we'll we'll put on the market in two weeks, that it's separated by the staircase of the SFR, um, single family, yeah, the front unit. Uh, oh no, it's it's not on here. Before I was developing where you know we basically attach from the main floor all the way up to the third floor. You know, I mean, it's sold, but I feel like these new ones that we'll have on the market soon uh, will create, it will be more appealing to the buyers just because you feel like you're sort of separated from the single family, so, yeah. And then we have a, a daddy in the back, and then we have an alley in the back as well. And this, this uh, site's kind of unique just because um, it's very wide. Uh, more than so, the typical lot size in Seattle is like 40 by 100 or 50 by 100. So this one, this one's in Maple Leaf, is a double lot that we're building. That we're basically gonna have, you know, SFR ADU DADU times two, because it was a double lot. So six, six units. Yeah, six units. How long does that take in Seattle to set one up? <sighs> I know, right? Um, <laughs> it's about a year. You know, but the the cool thing about Seattle versus the, all the other cities is that you can do the subdivide and the building permits at the same time. Other cities, you have to do the subdivision first, then you can do the building permits. And some cities actually make you do the the subdivision and then the civil work, which is all the site development of putting on in sidewalks and you know uh, 
plumbing and sewer, then you can apply for the building permits. So that's even longer, right? So part of the bill that passed, the 1337 for the ADUs, is ho it's cutting the permit fees and also the timeline. Give a, give a brief overview of the, the condo process. So when you once you start building your dadu, you want to just start talking to your attorney, a uh, condo attorney. Maybe uh, Scott, do you do HOAs? I don't, but I I can refer you to somebody. Who yeah, you, you want to start working on your condo uh, process. Um, so, which means you know you get your survey to come back out uh, to do a condo map, which basically you tell them where you know, the DADU ends and where the ADU uh, ends, where the common area is, which is like the walkway to, you know, if the DADU is in the back, there's got to be a common way for them to walk to the mailbox in the front, you know, so that's a common area. And then once the condo map's done, then you have, you know, your condo, your, your HOA, which is, you know, you tell them if you want people to hang clothes on the, on the liner to dry their clothes or not, or, prohibit them from Airbnbs or where to park their car so they, they don't block other tenants or other units to, from driving into their garage or their parking pad. So that's where you can make up all the rules. Um, but you know the attorney we use, they, they have a template for that, so it's not too difficult. Not uh, allowed to do sub subdivide on, on single family zoning. So that's the way we do subdivide is by condoing it so that we are allowed to sell it separately. Then you, you know you get to pick your monthly fee, which we, right now we're just like five bucks a month. You know, I mean everything is brand new, so that there's nothing to upkeep. Then you get the map recorded at King County or whatever county you're going to be in. You get new parcel uh, tax parcel numbers. The, the county will give it to you, um, so that that way all three units pay their own tax. And then once you go to sell the units and you you sell all three units, the the new owners will become, you know, they'll, they'll uh, select their president, treasury, treasurer, and secretary. So they will start uh, running that, but it shouldn't be very, you know, time consuming for them. Um, once a year, they just got to renew their license. It's just like any other HOAs, renew their license uh, with the state, and that's really it. PSE, Seattle City Light, they all have their separate meters, um, but with the one issue, the biggest issue we run into and buyers, agents have questions is like, how is the water bill split up? <laughs> because they currently only allow us to have one water meter. Um, so we put in sub meters in each of our units uh, so that that way they can go and read it. And of course there's other sub meters that you can um, see it on, uh, on your phone and all that too. But uh, we try to keep it simple and, you know, cost effective and just have them go to their water uh, meter and read it off so that they can split the bill. So that's among all the three owners to do that every two months. And then on SPU, there's you know your garbage and sewer as well. So they, those are separate. You can separate that. But, um, but for the water bill, it goes off of the, the meter, the, the counter. So in that condo dock, uh, the HOA duck, that's when you can also tell them how to split it up, split up the bill if you want to. Like 50% for the single family, 25% for the ADU, and 25% for the DADU. So that you can make that up and change it any way you want. Or, or instead of the percentage, you can say refer to the submeters and divide it up by that. But when you build three in Seattle, one of them has to be green built, so meaning really no gas. So the, my daddies are usually all electric, as long as we can. Uh, but going forward, you know, that's banned. So no, no more gas in new construction. So no us, we like to follow Kelly. So <laughs> maybe we can start putting gas back in. So okay, yeah. So Seattle, you know, you can build up to 50% for the single family. You can build up to 50% of the lot size, right? ADU and daddies, you know, it's typically at a thousand. But if you build, you know in the basement, then you can add more square footage. Or, you know, a couple, of, actually this one, uh, uh, the ADU is about uh, 10, uh, 1,050 because we put in a scooter garage. <laughs> so, you know, if you add in a scooter garage or things like that or, un, you know, unfinished space, you can get a little bit more square footage. Um, so. 
you know, there's little trips, tips and tricks we can do. So you can do vaulted ceilings, and then, you know, after you get your certificate of occupancy, you can do whatever you want after that and create a loft, create... So in, if you have a 5,000 square foot lot, you, you can build a 2,500 square foot single family, right? 250 square foot of double uh, two-car garage for the single family, and then a thousand ADU and a thousand DADU. And then if you add two, uh, if you add a garage to the DADU and ADU, that doesn't count against your thousand square feet either. Your lot size is six thousand. You can build up to three thousand square foot SFR. So this is three-floor ADU. Each one is about three hundred and fifty square feet. So it, it it comes up to be about ten fifty because we had that scooter garage. But. The DADU can only be two stories. The ADU can be three stories. Rooftop decks and everything. So one is attached and one is detached. Of course, you know, when you do that, you incur, you know, additional costs of concrete, waterproofing, you know, it's basement, you know. In, do you actually prefer the flat lot over doing that? Uh, I'm building without a basement, um, but if that creates additional bedroom, you know, you can rent out, you can rent it out for more. Daddies that you see, ADUs and daddies you see, it's usually two bedrooms, two bath. It's very, you know, the, the floor plan is pretty standard. But we're going to be pushing out a three bedroom, two and a half bath pretty soon. Um, just because we have some width in our lot size to be able to do that. Who's your architect? Oh, a handful. I mean, we got uh, Julian Weber to one of our... Ming is Jacqueline Johnson. So I have a handful of people that I can refer you guys to. But the pre-approved plans, I don't know if you guys are familiar with that, is the, the ones that Seattle has uh, on uh, aduniverse.com, is that there's like nine or ten pre-approved plans that the cities basically streamline, and you're able to get that permit in like, you know, uh, probably six, six weeks, six to ten weeks, depending on survey, and then how busy that architect is. You have to use the architect that drew up that pre-approved plan. Oh, yeah, and so Renton has that too, um, that I know of, and then you know, I don't know about the other cities if they have pre-approved plans, but it's pretty standard that you can just pick one and get, get the construction going probably in, in a month or two. So that's the cool part, and hopefully they're gonna uh, add more pre-approved plans because the nine that they have, only about two of them are about 1,000 square feet. The rest is like, four to six hundred square feet and you know for us uh, we like to maximize our square footage so. now the other law the, the 1110 you can put maybe a fourplex and sixplex so we'll see i mean I, I, you know don't know too much detail about that yet but. so we are our own general and then we sub everything out we have sub superintendents and project managers uh, within the company um, and yeah, we sub everything out. It took a year to do permitting, and then another year to uh, build. And but this is, um, you know, a, a three-unit built, so it was more difficult. But if you guys were just doing a straight, I'm going to add a daddy in the backyard. That you guys should be able to do that with. And if you use the pre-approved plan, you should be able to do that in six months or less, right? Um, but if you do a custom daddy, you know, again, that depends on how busy your architect is. Um, but you should be able to get that permit in Seattle for in maybe a month or two months and then build it out in three to four months as well. Um, so uh, there's, you know, we have projects there where we saved the existing house and built two in the back. If it's worth saving and if it makes sense number wise and everything, then we keep it. Yeah, the, for the most part, we like to start over just because if the house sits in the middle of the lot, that's one of the things that, you know, you got, I, I didn't mention about what my ideal lot would be, is that either hopefully the, the house sits in the far back of the lot or very in the front of the lot, so that way you can add two. And if the house sits all the way in the back, then you can turn that hopefully into a dadu if it's a thousand square feet or less. Then you can build the single family and the ADU in the front. There's another one that we're uh, gonna buy that we're gonna just gonna attach it by the pantry. We're gonna keep the existing house and and that one's only a, a single family with a basement, but we're gonna just attach that by a pantry. You know, as long as it's heated space, then 
the city would be okay with it. So, but you know, the like five feet or something. Uh, if it's five feet, then you gotta put firewall. You no, know, like uh, like what one we have one in West Seattle that has a wetland buffer, a uh, wetland, and then we have to have a wetland buffer, and I think that's like 15 feet. You know, be careful on those. You know, you guys run into that. Potential property. Yeah. Do you give yourself a long enough feasibility to validate all this information before closing? I should, but I don't. <laughs> well, it's it's just because you know we, I've been doing this for a while. But you know, on the on the tougher sites, the more complex ones with slopes and ECAs, uh, big trees, then then I try to give myself more time. Now we can't, like I said, it's just because it's not as crazy as it was the first the last couple of years of buying. You know, but now you're you're able to, so you should use that to your advantage. That's not an issue now in Seattle. Three years ago, that was an issue because there weren't any. Yeah. Probably, but in Seattle, there's so many that it should be easy. Outside of Seattle, what we probably did back a few years ago was look at other single family that was a thousand square feet. Then you got to minus it out because you don't have yard space as, as big of a yard space anymore, right? So you might take out another 50, 100K, you know, depending on, uh, sub subtract that from your ARV, and then, you know, you, then you sort of get a sale price. So you you know, you're going to run into that problem with all the other cities. I mean, Kirkland, you can probably get some good comps for cottages in Dadu because they're, they've been selling around there for around 1,000 to 1,300 square feet. So that's what I would do is if you're in Everett, Berrien, you know, Tequila, you just look at for lots that 900 to 1,100 square feet, that's your best use for comps and then subtract out you know, how much yard space they, got, they have versus what you're going to do is, you know, uh, your lot size after you condo it. So that's why I feel like this is like a, a very good opportunity, you know, for us to do it now, especially on the, all of the other jurisdiction that didn't allow it. You, you know, your, your profit margin, you should break even after selling your first big unit, the SFR, or maybe one and a half, like F SFR and the ADU, and the rest should be profit. Buyers love new, new construction more than, even if you did a, you know, some people like new uh, remodel homes, but new constructions always, wins. Land cost is a little different because we are, we're buying it at a higher price than, you know, than West Seattle. So that's the difference, but the build cost really is the same. So why, if you're going to take a risk, why not just buy in a, in a popular neighborhood and where people want to live? So yeah, that, that's really it. So architects is usually, again, if we're just focusing on building a dadu and not my three unit play, I mean, you're talking about maybe five to 15,000. All right, depending on if you're using a pre-approved plan or a custom data, right? And then you got your civil engineer. Um, that's all the drainage that you have to do in Seattle that they don't want the, the, the storm water flowing out of your lot. So they, you got to put the, all the drainage in. So the civil engineer does that and they're probably from 3,000 to 5,000. Structural engineer, uh, that's probably another three to 5,000. A survey, that's 3,000 to 5,000. Yeah, that, that's it. And then the, the permitting fees, it's probably around five to 10,000, depending on you know how many corrections you get back from the city. I think it's just manpower, you know. Um, we're, we're only a six, six person company. Um, so if we want to take on more projects, we'll probably have to hire more superintendents, project managers. But right now, the good thing for you guys is that the contractors are just you know, all looking for work. So negotiate on the price, you know, lumber's gone down, sort of like balance out the high interest rates. So, you know, definitely negotiate on the, the contract, uh, contractors. So uh, yeah, I mean, the, for me to scale, hopefully next year we'll, we'll do a hundred of these, you know, either that means stick building or modular, we will see. That's where I'm heading down is trying to discover what's possible in, in Seattle and every city in this uh, modular way. Okay, uh, again, a round of applause for Jimmy. Thank you, thank you. I thought that was uh, the next new horizon, right, in real estate. So all of us can become experts in this. <laughs>